بسم الله الحمد لله صلى الله عليه وسلم على رسول الله وصحبه ومن والاه ثم اما بعد ان شاء الله today we will talk about tawbah we will discuss tawbah and uh, at the beginning of this discussion uh, this hadith is particularly significant when it, whenever we talk about tawbah this hadith is reported by Imam Muslim from Al-Aghar ibn Yasar al-Muzani Al-Aghar ibn Yasar al-Muzani and he reported from the Prophet Sallallahu that he said Ya ayuhal nas tubu ila Allahi wa astaghfiru fa inni atubu fil yawmi mi'ata marra Ya ayuhal nas, O people tubu ila Allahi wa astaghfiru repent to your Lord and seek his forgiveness or to repent to Allah and seek his forgiveness fa inni atubu fil yawmi mi'ata marra for I repent to Allah I return to Allah in repentance a hundred times every day 100 times every day. And why, why is it important that we start with this hadith particularly? Because we want to, to see why is it. Now we will talk about tawbah, and certainly we could talk about the importance of tawbah, we could talk about the conditions of tawbah and so on. But at the beginning we want to see why is it that we are not concerned about tawbah. Why is it that we are not repenting, are not returning to Allah in repentance, are not asking Allah for forgiveness, uh, not even ten times a day. You know, those of us who, you know, the people of wealth power amongst us are making repentance to Allah like three times a day or twice a day, if, if even that. So, repenting to Allah فَإِنِّي أَتُوبُ فِي الْيَوْمِ مِعَ تَمَرَّ I repent <coughs> to Allah 100 times it's not simply to say Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah otherwise we will be all doing well but this is to, to actually return to Allah it, it is to, to repent, to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, with a heart that's present and uh, willpower and determination to to actually make the return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why is it that we do not repent as many times as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa or the Sahaba or the Tabi'een did? I think some of the, one of the reasons is the lack of certainty, lack of yaqeen. Because if you're certain, certain of you know, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the presence and greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, certain of His promise, certain of death, certain of the hereafter, certain of al-hisab, the reckoning, certain of suhuf, the scriptures, the scrolls that will be rolled out for you on the day of judgment, certain of the sirat, the bridge over the hellfire, certain of the hellfire and the jannah, jannah and nar. If you are certain of all of this, then you would certainly be making more tawbah than, you know, we are uh, now. So it is the lack of certainty, uh, lack of certainty. And the remedy of this is to increase your certainty, to increase your awareness, to increase the awareness, the recognition of your heart, ma'rifatul qalb, the awareness of the heart and the recognition of uh, the heart. Uh, and it is not only an intellectual exercise, because that is usually how we address those issues, as an intellectual exercise. Like I can, you know, prove to you that, you know, there will be reckoning. Uh, Allah created all of this universe, Allah is great, Allah is, you know, this magnificent creation, the creator of this magnificent, glorious uh, creation must be great, must be purposeful. Uh, shall we then treat the, the, the Muslimin, the submitters, like the criminals, like the Mujrameen? There has got to be purpose, and the purpose is not, we don't see that this purpose is fulfilled in this life, so, so there's got to be another life. We could sit down and talk about this, but it is the zikr of the heart, it is the remembrance of the heart that will make you 
that would make this knowledge, if, you know, effective, uh, consequential. Uh, the, you know, the, that remembrance is the second is the second point after the, the the first point of certainty, the remembrance. Adam did not lack certainty, uh, so, uh, Did he lack certainty? How could you lack certainty? If he was created by God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heavens, spoke with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Nabiun Mukallam, he would he did not lack certainty. But Adam fell for the traps and the snares of the shaitan because Nasi. We have given our covenant to Adam so he forgot and we did not find him to have great determination. Or we did not find him to have determination. Nasi. So after he forgot, then it was easy for the shaitan to trick him into the sin with the promise of longevity, the promise of, you know, wealth. You know, Faswas alayhi shaitan qala ya Adam, hal adulluka ala shajarat al khuldi wa murkil la yabla. The shaitan whispered to him and he said, O oh Adam, should I not tell you of the tree of immortality and position that will not vanish? So these, the, the two things that the Prophet sallallahu reminded us of when he said, as reported by Al Bukhari Muslim from Abi Huraira and Anas radiallahu anhuma, Yaharam ibn Adam wa Yashibu minhu thnatan al hirsu al al mali wa al hirsu al al umur, al qal al amal wa al amal wa al hirs. So the son of Adam will grow, grow senile, but two things will stay youthful in him greed for money and uh, greed for longevity, the desire for longevity and greed for money. So, but the, the root cause is. وَلَقَدْ عَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ آدَمَ فَنَسِيَ وَلَمْ نَجِدْ لَهُ عَزْمًا Had he not forgotten, he would have not been tricked by the shaitan. So certainty, remembrance, those are the, the, the two biggest problems that we encounter. The lack of certainty. Certainty is when you, you, you are certain of the Jannah and the Nara as if you see them. Uh, that is that, that's a problem. That's our problem: the lack of certainty, the lack of remembrance. Now there are so many things that could help us with certainty and remembrance, including the zikrul maut, as the Prophet ﷺ said, "Akthiru zikra hazim al frequently remember the interrupter of all enjoyments. التفكر في إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب Verily in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alter, alter, alternation of the days and day and night are signs for people of understanding are signs for people of understanding so التفكر it is basically to have time for yourself تتفكر you basically examine uh, your condition, examine your existence in this life, examine your goal, your objectives of this life, and that is extremely important. That takes us to the third point, which is that we are distracted all the time. So we are not having this time for ourselves, because you are at work, from 8 to 5 and then you go back and the kids are screaming and then you know you just you, you come to the masjid and uh, people also sometimes are loud and this and that and uh, you go back to home and you're too tired you go to sleep and then you wake up and so on and so forth and that is sad but you need you need to pull yourself out of this somehow even what even if you can't physically pull yourself out from your environment but you need to uh, mentally block off yourself so that you could have this time even while you're driving you know have some time for tafakkur while you're waiting for anything at any government agency have some time for tafakkur do you see the gray hair that you have, if you have gray hair? But even if you don't have gray hair, have time for, <clears throat> for tafakkur in, in, in everything that's, uh, that's around you. 
Do you see the, the, the calamities that befall people? Do you, do you, did you hear of, you know, like a young man or young woman that you, were, that you knew uh, who actually died or who were, you know, afflicted by like a terminal disease? Did you, did you know of any? Uh, so those things, they are treasures sent your way. If you have to fakkur, you will be actually able to, uh, to make so much progress with your Iman, so much progress with your Yaqeen, if you do, do tafakkur. And at the end of the day, if, the, if you, know, you live a very long life and you are given the longevity that you wanted, and you are given the wealth and you are given the status and power and good reputation, and you know, the, the beautiful wife and the big uh, you know, house and the nice car and the, the, whatever it is that you wanted. You've, give, you've been given all of this. There is like, there are three ayat in Surah Al-Shu'ara that will be an eye-opener for, for the person who may be given all of this. Allah said, أَرَأَيْتَ إِمْ مَتَّعْنَاهُمْ سِنِينَ ثُمَّ جَاءَهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُوَعَدُونَ مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُمَتَّعُونَ أَرَأَيْتَ إِمْ مَتَّعْنَاهُمْ سِنِينَ Have you considered this? What if we give them enjoyment for many years, sinin, for years, for many years? What if we? You know, forget about, you know, the, the, the failures in this life. Forget about the calamities and disasters and diseases and, you know, death of loved ones and, and so on and so forth. You've been given it all. You're, you're okay. You're enjoying your life in every single aspect. Araita and matana hum sinin. Consider this, or have you considered this? What if we give them enjoyment for many years? Then it had, it had come to them what they were promised. Death. Departure. Did anyone, did anyone escape from this? Have you seen anyone escape from it? No. It had not availed them. They were not availed by their enjoyment. This enjoyment, have you ever, like, you know, seen like a, a wiser, older man and, uh, and talk to him about what he, what he thinks of life? You know, like someone who's really old, really senile. You know, where is the enjoyment of yesterday or yesteryear? Where is, where is all of this? It's gone. Now you're worried about your joint pains and your knee pains and you're worried about your pills that you have to take every day. And, you, you know, you're basically taking your pills every day so that you could defer the inevitable, which is not deferrable. It's just that, you, that you're trying to, to, to make it through the, the, this, uh, those last days of your life as honorably as possible and as healthy as possible. Uh, but the, the inevitable is inevitable. It is not, you know, uh, it's not deferrable and you can't uh, escape from it. So, أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ مَتَّعْنَهُمْ سِنِينَ ثُمَّ جَاءَهُمْ مَكَانُوا يُعَدُونَ مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُمْ مَكَانُوا مَتَّعُونَ So certainty in Allah, in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this creation, in what this life is about, in death, in the hereafter, in al-sirat, wal-hisab, wal-jannah, wal-nar, Certainty and the remembrance of the heart at all times, your rem the remembrance of the heart. The tongue reminds the heart. The remembrance of the tongue is extremely important for the remembrance of the heart. So you remember Allah with your tongue. You say Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah to remind yourself of your need for repentance. That is what the tongue is doing. It is reminding you that you are in need of repentance, reminding your heart that you need to return to Allah. If it is just a verbal phenomenon that is just verbal, just oral, nothing beyond this, then it doesn't do the work required. Just like the salah that does not tanhan al or munkar, that does not prevent its doer from, you know, lewdness and, and, and evil. So, so the, the certainty, the remembrance, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at, at all times and, and tafakkur in this, in this life and, and the one to come. All of these should urge you to make tawbah, to make tawbah. So why are we not making tawbah? Some people are not making tawbah because 
of the distraction, and we talked about the distraction, and we said that we have to find the way, because the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ عُتُلٍ جَوَّازٍ مُسْتَكْبِرٍ سَخَّابٍ فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ حِمَارٍ بِالنَّهَارِ جِيفَةٍ بِاللَّيْلِ عَالِمٍ بِأَمْرِ الدُّنْيَا جَاهِلٍ بِأَمْرِ الْآخِرَةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ, لا يحب كُلَّ عُتُلٍ جَوَّازٍ مُسْتَكْبِرٍ سَخَّابٍ فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ Allah does not like every uh, rough, mean, uh, overbearing, you know, it could be like, you know, big, you know, fat, but it does not just mean fat, like, you know, fat and overbearing with his, you know, size. Mustakbir, uh, arrogant, sakhabin fil aswaq, noisy at the market. Himar in bin Nahar works like a donkey during the day, Jifat in bin Layl, and like a dead piece of meat at night. So he works for the dunya so hard like a donkey during the day, and then when the night comes, there is no room whatsoever for remembrance, for salah, for tafakkur, for anything, uh, even for his family. He will be like a, like a dead piece of meat. Jifatin uh, Billayl Alimin bi amr al-dunya Knowledgeable in the affairs of the dunya Jahilin bi amr al-akhira Ignorant of the affairs of the akhira So we don't want to do this And we don't want to be the, you know, this distracted From you know, the ultimate destination From the true journey uh, and, and the ultimate uh, destination Yet, like I said, this is not to, to basically uh, flog our backs. This is just a reminder so that we could do as much as we could. And many times people do work 8 to 5. They can't not work 8 to 5. But try, try to be, try to, to, try to have less aspirations, uh, not in terms of accomplishment, because as Muslims we should be accomplished and achieved. Less aspirations in terms of consumption, in terms of wants and cravings and desires from this dunya. Because that is essential for you to be more heedful of the hereafter, more mindful of the hereafter, more mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will really need to be less distracted by this dunya. And that will take of you to be less mindful, less keen on the, the, the many cravings and wants and desires people have of this uh, dunya. Uh, and if, if you can't change your environment, you can't change your work, you can't change any of that, at least make a, the commitment to be, you know, introspective, contemplative, to, to not waste time while you're driving, while you're... See this baker, the, uh, the story of the baker and Ahmad ibn Hanbal is a beautiful story, you know, the story of the baker. So when Ahmad ibn Hanbal went to the masjid and then he slept at the masjid and the servant of the masjid or the guard or, uh, told him, you know, you can't sleep here, get out. And Ahmad ibn Hanbal told him it's just going to be a little short while. And the, the man refused. He didn't know that he's Imam Ahmad. So... Uh, and the word Imam, you know, Imam is not like our, you know, Imam here in America, you know. Imam is basically the highest caliber of the Mujtahid scholars in the history. That's what Imam means in Islamic terminology. But that's fine. If, if we use it here in America for a different purpose, لا مشاحطة في الصراح. There is no problem. Terminology is not a big deal. Uh, but as long as we know that the difference between Imam Malik and Imam such and such here. Uh, so he didn't know that this is Imam Ahmad, so he told him that you just get out of here. And Imam Ahmad went out and he slept by the steps of the masjid. And then the man caught him and said, you can't sleep here either. He told him I'm outside of the masjid, he said, but you can't sleep here either. So the man pulled him from his feet. Uh, you can imagine Imam Ahmad, Sahib uh, al-Musnad, Imam Ahl al-Sanah al-Jama'ah. So, so he pulled him from his feet. So this baker came by and saw this, and he felt bad for the old man being pulled from his feet. 
And so he said, uh, he said to Imam Ahmad, come to my uh, house and I, you could sleep there. So he went to the, uh, to the house of that baker and the baker was working, he was baking. And then, oh, uh, you know, throughout, you know, his work, he would say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. And uh, Imam Ahmad, you know, was impressed by this. And so that's the, the that's the point that I wanted to make of the story that the, the, he's he's working, but he is still able to mentally dissociate dissociate himself from the dunya and say astaghfirullah meaningfully. So Imam Ahmad was impressed, and he said to him, "You know, uh, what have you found as a result of your istighfar? I heard you making a lot of istighfar. What have you?" been given, uh, you know, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, every da'wah that I made was responded to except one. And he said to him, which one? He said, I made the dua to see the Imam Ahmed. <laughs> uh, and so that's the only da'wah that was not uh, responded to. Uh, so Imam Ahmed said to him, لَقَدْ جَرَّنِ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ جَرَّ Allah drew me or pulled me from my feet to, to you. Uh, so, so that is, you know, we we could do this. We could do this. This is doable, even if you can't leave your environment, even if you if if we couldn't uh, leave, you know, Jersey and go to Pennsylvania and live in some somewhere serene place, you know, like work as farmers. Or, well, these are not uh, unrealistic ideas, by the way. But they may be difficult. They may be not doable. We may have engagements, we may have families, we may have lots of things. But even if we can't do this, then there is a possibility of blocking off the distractions mentally, psychologically, uh, and, and you know, connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reflecting on your, your life and what is to come afterwards. Uh, so certainty and remembrance, decreasing the distractions, all of this. So if we, if we do all of this, there are still other things that, that keep us from Tawbah. There are still other things that keep us from Tawbah. One of the other things that keep us from Tawbah is our, uh, basically, heedlessness. Uh, uh, he, when it comes to our sins, we don't really see our sins to be problematic. We, you know, you don't see the sins to be pro problematic. And that is where this hadith would be of, of help, where the Prophet ﷺ said, this hadith is reported by Sahid ibn Sa'ad, Sa'idi and Aisha, and, uh, and collected by Imam Ahmad and Ibn Majah and others. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said <clears throat> in different uh, variant reports, he said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحَقَّرَاتِ أَزْذُنُوبِ إِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحَقَّرَاتِ أَزْذُنُوبِ فَإِنَّهُمْ يَجْتَمَعُنَ عَلَى الْعَبْدِ حَتَّى يُهْدِكْنَاهُ وَقَالْ لَعَائِشَ فَإِنَّ لَهَا مِنَ اللَّهِ طَالِبًا إِيَّاكُمْ وَحَقَّرَاتِ الْذُنُوبِ Beware of the sins considered minor, for they pile up until they cause you destruction. They pile up on you until they cause you destruction. It's one dot at a time inserted in your heart that will completely seal your heart uh, over uh, time. So to run away from those sins and to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quickly is, is extremely important. These are all reasons why we, we're not repenting. We're not repenting because we have lack of certainty. If we really behold the Jannah and the Nar in front of our eyes, we would run to repentance. If we have the remembrance of Allah all the time with our hearts, not just keep in mind the Prophet said a hundred times. Certainly, this means that when the Prophet said Astaghfirullah, he meant it. And that is the, that is the difference between saying Astaghfirullah and just saying astaghfirullah and repenting. Repenting could be easily done a hundred times a day, a hundred times a day by 
saying astaghfirullah while you mean it. By saying astaghfirullah while you truly mean it. And being mindful of your sins. And the mindlessness of the sins that we have is because we have lack of knowledge. If we have more knowledge, the knowledge of the hereafter. So one other reason <clears throat> one other reason we are not repenting or we are not repenting as often as we should is our like I said, our lack of concern when it comes to our sins, our ignorance of what sins are and how destructive they are. We're waiting for the big sins. We're waiting for the big sins. And we're not seeing the smaller ones. And we're waiting for the big sins that are obvious. And we're not seeing the biggest ones that are hidden. So not only that we're not seeing muhaqqarat al zanub which are the, the, the sins considered the minor by people, but we're not seeing the biggest sins that are hidden. Because we're not looking for them. And if you're not looking for them, you will never find them. If you're not looking for them, you're the, you will never find them. So shirk al-azghar should be worse than, than major sins, right? Shirk al-azghar is riya, showing off, ostentation. The dunya is pursued, is sought by the work of the al-akhira. That is shirk azghar, that is riya. So how often do we do this? How often do we seek the pleasure of the people? Isn't it a major sin that you are seeking the pleasure of the people when Allah is looking at you? And this is, an, you know, you, you're seeking the pleasure of the people by which you sh should be drawn closer uh, to Allah, by that w with which you should be drawn closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is hidden. But we, we, we don't really look for those sins so unless we you know unless we you know as long as we're not drinking alcohol we're not committing you know adultery or fornication we're not doing any of this harming people punching them in the face we don't recognize the sins because we have you know been negligent of the heart and that's the king of the organs. And that is where you should be looking for your greatest sins. That is where you should be looking for your greatest sins. الْعُجْبِ الْكِبْرِ الْغُرُورِ الْرِيَاءِ حُبِّ السُّمْعَةِ الشُّهْرَةِ الْحِقْدِ الْغِلِّ الْحَسَدِ You know, so envy, self-deceit, self-conceit, ostentation, showing off. Uh, hatred, rancor, despising your brothers, etc. All of these things we're not looking for, so we will not see them. But if we look for them, if we look the, for them, we will find much that we have in our hearts that needs repentance from. Okay. Then, what what makes us also what makes us also you know, slow to repentance, slow to returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the fear of repentance. So we have this fear, fear of repentance, fear of returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because you think that you have to give up all the, the nice things that you do now. Sometimes like you're, you're afraid of righteousness, you're afraid of true submission to Allah. You're afraid of true Islam. So you stay away, you know, a step behind so that you don't have to be, to force yourself into that life that may sound to you hard. So Abdullah ibn Marzouq was a contemporary of Sufyan ibn Uyayna and Al-Fudayr ibn Ayyad, rahimahumullah. And he was very... Uh, wealthy, extremely wealthy, and he was friends with Al Khalifa Al Mahdi. So one day he, you know, 
had singers uh, by his home and he had like a party and he drank and he missed the Zuhr and Asr and Maghrib. Keep in mind that during their time, this would be, you know, this would be the, the, the facet that, that is, uh, during our times, uh, the fact that he already, that he already prays is good, you know. We say that, you know, he, but he prayed Fajr, alhamdulillah. So, the, so he missed the Zuhr and Asr and Maghrib and I, a Jariya came by. No, Abdullah ibn Marzouq, not in Khalifa, not in Mahdi. Abdullah ibn Marzouq, yeah. Uh, so the Jariya came by and threw a hot piece of coal on his leg. And the, so it burned him. Uh, so he said to her, like he, he, he was shocked by this, and she said to him, this is just a small piece of the fire of this dunya. And it clicked in right away, which, which shows you that th there was work done on him before, because the click in means that there, that there is something that is buried under the dust, and once you remove the dust, you will get to the treasures. So the, the work that we need to do in our hearts, the knowledge that we earn, even if some dust came by and covered it, it, it is still there. So Abdullah bin Arzuq, you know, awakened suddenly, and he decided that in order for him to truly repent, he will have to give up everything. So he gave up everything, and he gave all of his money in charity and he became an asset. So Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad and Sufyan ibn Ayyana passed by him, you know, visited him at his new uh, home, and he had uh, like a brick of mud, like a mud brick uh, as a pillow underneath his head. So they, 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 they felt for him, he was one of the wealthiest people. And uh, they said to him, uh, we know that من ترك شيئا لله عوضه الله خيرا من Whoever leaves something for Allah, Allah will make, her, make him up by something that is better. So how did Allah make you up? They were not asking him you know, basically to figure out if this is true or not. They were certain it is true. They wanted to know. So he, what do you think the answer was? He said, "Arrida bima anafi." Being pleased with my condition. He, I have rida. I am pleased with my condition. You know. So when he was in sin, in the life of sin, he was not pleased with himself. He was not pleased with his condition. There is there is this you know pain in his head. His conscience, you know, rebels against him every once in a while. But now I am completely contented with my condition. And that is better than all I had before. So the, 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 we, we have many reasons to, that would urge us to, you know, hasten to repentance. We have a door that is completely open by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslim reported from Abi Hurairah, the Prophet sallallahu said, تُقْبَلُوا التَّوْبَةَ مَا لَمْ تَطْلُعُ الشَّمْسُ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا That the tawbah will be accepted until the sun rises from the west. Tirmidhi reported from Abdullah ibn Umar that the Prophet sallallahu said, تُقْبَلُوا تَوْبَةُ الْعَبْدِ مَا لَمْ يُغَرِّرُ The tawbah of the, the slave will be acceptable or accepted by Allah until he reaches the death rattle. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this, uh, the, the beautiful hadith of uh, the report by a Muslim from Abi Dhar radiallahu anhu that starts by, Ya ibadi inni haramtu al-dhulma ala nafsi, O my servants, I made injustice forbidden upon myself. Allah says in the middle of this hadith, Ya ibadi innakum tukhti'una bil-layli wal-nahar, wa ana aghfiru al-dhunuba jami'a, fastaghfiruni aghfir lakum. O my servants, you make mistakes day and night, and I forgive all sins, so ask me for forgiveness, and I will forgive you. A door that is open, a promise that is standing, standing promise from Allah. Repent, and I will accept you. 
repent and I will make you up for what you leave or what you abandon for me. Not only this, repent and I will not only forgive your sins, but I will give you in their stead hasanat. What else could you? It was reported that uh, uh, Musa السلام, they had a drought during the time of Musa السلام, and he went out uh, to pray with 70,000 of his people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, did not answer the prayer so Musa asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah had deserted him and Allah told them that I have not deserted you but there is amongst you in your midst Abdun Yubarizuni bin Maasi Munzu Arbaina Sana. He is, you know, a slave that has been defined me with sins for the last 40 years. So Musa said, he, so Musa called on that Abd, Okhruj min Bainina, leave us. Because with, it is for you that there, we have been prevented, that the rain has been prevented or that we have been afflicted by this drought. It is because of you. So this man, you know, if he walks out now, everybody will know, it will be like disgraceful. Everybody will know that it is this man uh, for which the, the they were, you know, deprived of rain. And if he sits the drought will continue, and his people will uh, will be destroyed. He will be destroyed with his people. So what does he do? So he he covers his head with his with his uh, thobe or garment, and then he says, "Ya Rabbi, amaltani arba'ina sana. Oh my Lord, you have deferred me. You've given me respite for forty years." And now I return to you in repentance, so accept me. So, uh, so, uh, so the it started to rain, and Musa wondered, "Oh my Lord, no one walked out from our midst." You said that you know that Abd has to walk out. So no one walked out. Uh, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said to Musa. Uh, so Musa asked Allah, فَبِمَا سَقَيْتَنَا How did you, you know, send rain unto us? And Allah said to Musa, بِالَّذِي مَنَعْتُكُمْ بِهِ It is because of the very one that for, for which I deprived you from rain that I now uh, send rain unto you for the very one. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa that he repented. So Musa said, Ya Rabbi da'ani arahat al-rajul as-salih. My Lord, let me see that righteous man. Musa knew that this is a man that has been in, in sin for the last 40 years. But Musa wanted the honor of seeing someone who just came out of, from all of his sins like a newborn. So this is someone that has been delivered from his sins like a newborn. So Musa wants the honor of meeting with uh, the, that person who just repented. Let me see him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I covered him up when he was defying me. How will I disgrace him when he, when he has now repented? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not show him to Musa. He said that I covered him up while he was defying me. Now that he repented, how would I disgrace him? So th there is every reason why we should repent. There is a door that is open. There is a merciful Lord that is awaiting your, your repentance. Uh, and he will be afrah bitawbati abdihi min ahadikum saqata ala ba'iri wa qad adallahu bi ardin fara. He will be, he will rejoice in your tawbah more than one who had lost his camel in the middle of the desert and then found it. And uh, he will make you up for all that you lose, for all that you miss. And he will turn your hasanat, your, your sayyat, 
into hasanat. Why should anyone wait and not repent, and not repent frequently? But in order for us to do this, we have to go back and increase our certainty, stay in remembrance, decrease the distractions, change something about our lives, commit to, the, to, to one of those changes, change something, because it, it does not just happen like this spontaneously. You need to do something, you need to make some commitment uh, in order for you to be of a tawabin. قول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم سبحانك وبحمدك شكرا لنا استغفر الله